thank you. I need that tea because my voice sounds like I got a dude in it. Do, 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 do. Y'all hear that? Um, <clears throat> it worked hard this weekend, but nevertheless, I'm still here and dedicated to feed my children that are on this page and those that um, have tuned in for the first time. If you are have never been on this page, you are now connected to the At Three With Me Bumblebees, and um, we are excited to have you. And I pray that uh, your day with us would be blessed. And so before I start into to, uh, this week's lesson, we have so much that God is doing for us. And I want to remind you, we have um, approximately a, just maybe 135 of these uh, signature topical Bibles left. And we extended it to 200 for the people that asked me if they, if I could wait for them. And uh, after that 200, there would be no more. And they ha we have some people that are buying them for their relatives for great Christmas gifts. And this is the signed and the numbered signature series, which means after this series, it would just be the topical Bible. And you will not be able to get this one anymore. And as the years go on, it will become valuable because it is numbered. And so you don't want to miss this opportunity. I had an opportunity to sit the other night um, when I was uh, approving them for press. And uh, I'm telling you, it's a gem. And, and this, this uh, nugget right here, um, I would use it myself. I would definitely use it myself. And I think that's the kind of person I am. I don't put out anything that, that if it don't help me, who, is, who else is it going to help? And if it confuses me, it is a bunch of confusion. Because um, I know that um, I'm able to comprehend things both naturally and spiritually. So I want you to have this. And you are sitting, you're waiting. Yes, we, and you know what we did? Um, there were some people that thought the Bible was gone. And they had already ordered the regular Bible. And uh, being that I'm the person that I am, and uh, I give all glory to God for that. It, j it just don't hurt anybody to just be nice. It doesn't hurt. And because they thought that Bible was gone, they ordered the regular Bible, just a few of them. And I went ahead and upgraded their order. Um, because I just love people. You know, it, it, it's not about the dollar for me. Um, it's about the relationship. It's about having a relationship with people and people know that um, they can trust you and they know your heart. And so on behalf of those few people that did, uh, they got a little Christmas gift from Dr. Bynum and all of y'all ain't going to be haters and y'all going to rejoice because God going to do something for you too. Amen. Amen. But those of you that want this topical Bible, I want you to uh, go to the website and order it. And so I don't want anybody to tell me, do you have any more? Do you just have any more? No, we will not have any more of these when it is done. And of course, we are pursuing now in, we are in page, in this gem of a book that we have, we are in page 43 of Praying from the Third Dimension. And um, I'm so excited. I was on the phone today um, with someone that was very important to um to this uh, book and to my ministry. And uh, the door that God opened up just today is absolutely phenomenal. It is, I am just dropping my head in awe of the Lord. And we're going to talk about um, connecting, uh, page 42 is connected with something that God gave me on yesterday. And um, I he, actually, he gave it to me uh, two nights ago because I've been spending uh, all night uh, finishing up the new book that's coming out in April entitled My Watch, Understanding the Eight Watches of Prayer. I've been working on this book for over two years, and um, now I am coming to the conclusion of it, and it is going to be a beast. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, my God, the things that God has been revealing to me in the midnight hour. So I've been working and pulling all-nighters. Because I can't write until everybody's going to bed and the phone stopped ringing. And I just sat up all night with buckets of coffee. You know, I'm shaking like this the next day. But oh well, you know, that's the price of getting it done. So we are in page 42. But the door that God has opened for the exposure of this book is absolutely phenomenal. And if you don't have this book, 
praying from the third dimension, you need to get it in your library. And if you order it, we're going to send you the MP3 so you can keep up with where we are right now. Because I don't want you to miss any steps because we are people that know how to start, but we finish wrong. And I am in the process of teaching everybody on this page how to be a strong finisher. How not just to start stuff strong, but to finish it just as strong as you started it. Amen. We're going to be strong finishers. So you need to go to the website and order this book. I told you that the that the um, the um, uh, distribution company, which I have a, a very big meeting with them on uh, next Monday, Tuesday. Um, they only gave me a lead way to be able to offer this book to um, my listeners here at, at three with me. And so after that, um, my ability to offer it online would be very, very limited, if at all, because then it would be distributed worldwide into stores and they would probably consider that as me competing with their shelf product. So if in, I don't know when they, I think they're going to not offer it on the bookshelves until probably February. And so that means there will be a wait before you can get it. So do not procrastinate. You spend money on everything. We spend money on nails and all that kind of stuff and, 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 and things that break and that we have to do it again. But when it comes down to spending money on something that is eternal, something that will not perish, something that you can always go back to, we question God about $20 and you won't do that. Uh, so go to the website and order your copy today. We are up to date. Books are going out. We are only sending out books now from the orders of the last few days. So if you have not gotten your book, look in the mail. We have found all the kinks, all the cracks. <sighs> and that was something. So if in fact also you are one of those individuals that PayPal has been holding your funds as to the reason why over 500 books was delayed going out because um, there was a hold on the pay. You can either go to Facebook and ask, uh, go to PayPal and ask them to release it. And um, if you don't, then Merry Christmas and we won't split hairs over people who just wanted a free book. So you know what? It's not that deep. So let's get into what God is doing and, and what he is saying. And so in this book, we're going to go to page 42, if you don't mind. And um, this is going to be a very profound lesson today because... You know, after that spank up y'all got on Friday night, that unexpected spank up. And I hope to God that you all have adhered to what the Lord has said. I got across there on the floor, all of my notebooks lined all the way up along the wall because I'm about my father's business and I'm not going to end up next year with any empty days. That's right. My days are going to be filled with the blessings of the Lord and we're not going to procrastinate on what God is doing on our behalf. Amen, somebody. Um, I got to do one other thing. Um, <laughs> one second, y'all. Okay. Okay. So, it says on page 42, and I want you to, to really pay attention to what he was saying. Because I came across something while I was writing in the book and um, the Lord brought it up the other day in um, at my friend's birthday and I thought it, w it, it was just it, it was necessary for me to to uh, repeat this and it says that after we got finished reading the scripture and um, the bottom part of the scripture of page 42 says there I will meet with you, meaning the third dimension, meaning the most holy place. And um, watch this, it's going to bless you today. There I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the cherubim that are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak intimately, intimately, I will speak intimately with you of all which I will give you in commandment to the Israelites. The, the key words that I want you to look at in this passage that he said, number one, I will speak with you intimately. Intimately. That's number one. Number one, I will speak with you intimately. Nowhere will you find in the scripture where he says, I will speak to you intimately 
when you are entering into the altar of sacrifice, when you are on the altar of Lord, forgive me. The only thing he is speaking to you is that you really need to come to know me and allow me to live in your life. In other words, that's a point of rescue. That's a point of, 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 of saving you all. Excuse me. I got to put this on my lips. I forgot. And they are so dry. It is so dry in this house. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I will speak with you intimately. Intimately.
The Bible said these were the shadows of things to come. They were the shadows of things to come, which means I'm, God is saying, I'm trying to give you a physical replica of what I'm doing in the spirit. And only those that understand and perceive that would understand that the tabernacle and that the Ark of the Covenant is with them even now. And when they place themselves into that third dimension, they are going in as the promise and the covenant of God and goodness of mercy will stand on the, each side of them. And watch this. Why? Because he said they're on the mercy seat, which means the reason why we are able to come into the third dimension is because we have received mercy. Anybody listening to that? Can anybody hear that? I'm only here because of mercy. Somebody need to confirm that today. I'm only here because of mercy. That's the only reason why I am able to sit in this place today. Because of mercy. Because of mercy. Because of mercy. So when you look at this, then what is he trying to say? Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. I wrote this down. I wrote this down. So why was, why is it necessary? And this is going to help somebody today. Why is it necessary that the Lord would release something that he has constructed? And yet it is, it is, it is transformed into a prophecy. It is, it is transformed into prophecy. So how does that relate to us today so that we would be assured that what is being taught is profound? How can I be assured that what is being taught is profound? How can I be most confident that everything that is being spoken to me right now, it is from a profound place? And that I, I, I don't have to question whether or not God is getting ready to do what he said he's going to do. But it is, Dr. Bynum, it is the truth. It is the truth. It, 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 it's not a lie. It's not a game. It's not something that, that, you know, that is not going to come to pass. It is the truth. Because first of all, we have to look at the nature of the way God speaks. We have to look at the nature of the way God speaks. Why do we believe so strongly in prophecy? I want I want I want I want us to ask ourselves that. What is it that causes us to believe so strongly in that which the Lord has spoken to us? Let's look at what he said to me here cuz I want you to see this. I want you to see this. It says here that sometimes watch this. Sometimes having a little difficulty here but I'm I'm okay. Sometimes it says that when prophecy is spoken, sometimes prophecy be re will be released. Now watch this. I, I want you to hear this. Why are you guaranteed? Because it said sometimes prophecy will be released because the prophecy is not just connected to you. You're not the only individual that's involved in this process. Do you not know that the mercy of God will allow prophecy to come to pass because the prophecy is going to affect more than you? And that is the reason why there are times when, 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 when you feel like, well, you know what, Dr. Bynum, I done messed up and I don't know if God going to let the prophecy come to pass. There's more than you that God has to consider when it comes down to this prophecy. You're not the only one that's in this equation. Are you, are, are, are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? And so when the Lord speaks of something, because look at Israel. I want you to look at Israel. I want you to look at them and look at how they conducted themselves. They were not always right. They were not always right in what they did and how they conducted themselves. Not by a long shot they were. But the fact that God had made a promise. And the Lord had prophesied that this was about the way he was going to relate to his people. We could not be denied of that because they were incorrect. God was always correcting them. God was always having to pull them out of something. They went in and out of bondage. And I do need you to see this today. They went in and out of bondage. But guess what? Their bondage did not affect what God promised that he would do. I just said something right there. 
I just spoke a word right there. What they were involved in did not stop God from keeping his word. When he speaks something, it's more than just to you. It is about everything and everybody that's connected to you. And that's why the warfare is so strong. The warfare is not strong because the devil hates you. The warfare is not strong because he doesn't like you. The warfare is as strong as it is because of all that is connected to this one prophecy being fulfilled with your name on it that you do not know about. You have no idea of how your prophecy affects other people, even our nation. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just say this to you. I was watching something the other day and some of you, some of you have heard of this. Some of you have heard of this movie and it's called, um, it's a wonderful life. I know, I, of course, if, if you have not seen it's a wonderful life, you don't, you just Scrooge, you know, nothing about the Christmas season. It's a wonderful life. And in that movie, in that movie, in the wonderful life, um, the man went through some changes and after he went through those changes, he ended up meeting an angel. And after he met the angel, um, the angel said, the man said, I just wish I wasn't born. The angel said, well, let me make that possible for you. So he allowed this man to go back in a time when he was not born. And all of the different people that he ran into that, that, that he thought were in certain positions, none of them were in those positions because he had not been born. In other words, the angel was able to show him everybody's life that was affected by his existence. That thing got me, because you know, I'm one of those people, I can't watch television without getting something prophetic from it. That's why they don't like to watch television with me, because I'd be like, that'll preach right there. Okay, that right there will preach right there. That right there is God right there. I, I'm sorry, I do that. And when I looked at this thing, I said, wow, this is deep right here. This is deep right here. And the Lord began to, to really speak to me about it and say, do you see how the prophecy that is spoken over your life and in your life affect people, even the fact that you were born. And had this man not been born, none of the people's lives would have gone in the direction that it went in. And this is why you, 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 you have to be careful. This is why you have to watch everything you say and do because you are a lifeline to so many things that you know nothing about. It's bigger than you. Who am I talking to? Watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you something about the truth. I read this yesterday and I got to, it, 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 it bears to be read again today. It bears to be read, read again today. The first thing we have to know about what God is about to speak to us in that third dimension is that it is not just gibberish. God is not just running his mouth. When he speaks something, it is profound. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? When he speaks something, it is already in existence. And I do want you to understand that. The fact that you go inside of the third dimension, the fact that you go inside of a third dimension and you get the word of the Lord inside of the third dimension. Let me tell you what's happening when you get there. When you get to the third dimension, do you not realize that when you are sitting in that dimension, that when God begins to speak to you, he's not speaking to you about what is going to happen. He's speaking to you about what already exists. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's why the enemy doesn't want you there. That's why the works of the enemy do not want the believer in that third realm. Because he already knows that once you get in that realm and you start hearing from God, you're not hearing about what God is about to do. You're hearing what the Lord has already done. And it's spoken with such an assurance that it is your spirit man that conceives it. And once it is conceived, he knows that you're going to give birth to it. And that's what frightens the enemy. Oh my God, who am I preaching to right here? Y'all know every time God got a word, the devil got to show up and, and just try to mess with everything he can. But that's all right. He got the right one because he know I don't stop. He know I don't stop. 
So let's look at this. Let's look at this. The first thing you have to realize, because we are embarking in that third dimension now, we are there. We're not on our way there, people. We are there. We are there. We have gone through the course of this book, and we've come to that place of revelation now. And that's why it's important that you get this book, because we are in a place of revelation now. And we have no time to waste. So when you look at this, it says, the first thing we must realize, when God is about to speak, when we are sitting in that third realm and God is about to speak, that this that the Lord is saying, it's not just a word, but it must become your way of life. In other words, I'm not just hearing God say something and then I'm going to think on what God said and then I might do what God said. No, when you hear the Lord speak something, it now must become more than just words, but my way of life. How do I know that I've received it? Because I live like I have received it. I just said something. How do I know that I've received this? Because I walk like I have received it. I talk like I have received it. Everything about the way I operate. It is as if I already have it in my hand. Oh God, I just, listen, let me tell you something. I feel the Holy Ghost on this. No, you have to be that. You have to be that which you have just heard. Everything about you must be transformed into that. Whatever the Lord has said, some of you all, right now, you're working on projects. Let this be that week that your mind began to transform itself to become what God has spoken to you. The thing that God has told you in the third dimension, it already exists. That's the reason why the Lord has given you to do it. He's given you to do it because your actions in the earth realm is pulling down from the spirit realm what has already taken place. And that which is spiritual is being molded into that which is natural by what you do. Now that right there will preach. Now that right there will preach. That right there will preach all day long. So do you not know that if you do nothing, then what the Lord has spoken is just sitting there in the spirit realm with your name on it, with no natural manifestation, all because you heard something, but you did not do anything. Oh my God. Who am I preaching to right there? Who am I preaching to right there? You can't just hear it. Because if you hear it and it's just phonics, then you will do nothing about it. But hold on. Thank you, Jesus. But when you hear it and it is spirit, the Bible said that which the Lord speaks, it is spirit and it is life. How do I know that I heard from God? I know that I heard from God because it comes down as spirit and it gives life to what I'm working on. I can't stop because it is the spirit of God that is moving me in this project. I want to quit. There are days when I feel like quitting, but I cannot quit because what is connected to my project is the spirit of God. And it is giving life to it. And that's why the devil have not been able to put it to death. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today? Oh my God. Oh my God. That which the Lord speaks is spirit. It is spirit. It is spirit. And it is life. And, 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 and that's, why, that's, why, that's, why, that's why we venture into these realms so that we can get in that third dimension. Because all I'm trying to do is get one glimpse of what the Lord is saying. All I want to do is get my ears close enough to the lips of God. Because if I give him say one word, do you not know you can run for a lifetime off of one word? You can go for a lifetime off of one word spoken from God. Oh my God. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? Somebody said, well, yes, I want to go to the third dimension, but you got to know what to do when you get there. You got to know that this is not the realm to play in. You got to know that this is not the church realm and this is not the religious realm. This is the realm of doing the word and not just hearing the word. This is a realm where you become responsible that if he speaks it to you and you do not do it, you are judged for it. 
This is not the realm that you run in because you think this is some spiritual, supernatural, hocus pocus experience. And I'm going to have goosebumps and see angels. In this realm, you become responsible for everything that you hear and everything that you see. Because if I show it to you, I'm going to do it. And if I speak it to you, I expect for you to do what I have told you to do. And not ponder over it and not doubt it. Because if you do, you are judged for it. Oh, who am I talking to? Oh my God. Oh my God. See this right here, this kind of this kind of realm separate, you know, all the religious people that just want an emotional experience. That's not what I'm looking for, people. That's not what I'm looking for. I've had it, been there, done that, been raised in church all my life. I'm a professional that running around the church. We're professionals that shouting. That's why you look on Facebook and you see people crossing their legs and doing all kind of fancy steps and, and, and running to the altar and, and just doing the jigaboo. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Because when you get through with all of that, you still have nothing to show for it. Because you're dancing in the outer court. You're dancing out there praising God. you in and off the altar of Lord forgive me. I'm talking about people that are tired of being where they are. I'm talking about people that have said I've had it up to here with church stuff. I'm ready to see the manifestation of what the scripture talked about. If God is not a God of partiality, then where is my interest into this third dimension? And why can I hear from God? And if I have heard from him, can somebody tell me what I'm supposed to be doing with what I just heard? Oh, my God from Zion. Are you hearing that? The Bible says we cannot be hearers only. We cannot be hearers only. But you must vow today to become a doer of what I've heard the Lord say. Why? Because when he speaks to me, it is no longer me being able to say that God spoke to me. It is me being able to say the Lord expects me to do something different. He speaks to us because it is time to do something different. Oh my God, who is he ministering to today? Who is he ministering to today? He doesn't speak just to be running his mouth. He speaks when there is a change in the course that you are taking. You're going this way. I'm going to speak a word to you so you can go this way. And if you got an inkling that I'm sending you this way, I'm going to speak a word so that you can be confident in the way that you're going. But my words come so that you can move. Not so that you can write a hundred thousand things in a notebook that you don't plan to ever do nothing with, but make excuses as to why you have not done it. Good Lord have mercy. Let me tell you what words do. Words only describe reality. Uh, words only describe reality. Listen to this. Words only describe reality, but truth reconstructs distorted reality. What is the prophetic? Why must I get in the third dimension? Because in the outer court, I am still battling with and in competition and vacillating in and out of my reality. Watch this. Because words describe my reality. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be careful that, that, that you're not just speaking words, but that you're speaking truth. Now, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Because we're speaking words of the reality. Words of the reality. Now, what is the reality? I can give you a perfect example. I am sitting here on the floor in a house talking into a telephone. A reality. Somebody can ask me, what am I doing? And I can say, somebody can call me on my phone and say, what are you doing, Dr. Bynum? And I can say, I am sitting here 
on the floor in my house talking into the camera of my phone. Did I just speak reality? Yeah. Yeah. Did I just speak words? Yeah. Was that the truth of that reality? Yes. Well, what is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Because it is only the truth of a one-sided reality. It is only the truth of a one-sided reality. It is the truth of the reality where I sit on this side. But then if somebody would have come to me and say to me, spiritually, they call me and say, in the spirit realm, what are you doing right now? Then I would say, I am sitting here on the floor, speaking into my telephone, and I am ministering to thousands of people and helping them to change their lives. And God is using me to speak a word into their life, and they're being transformed by the power of God. Is that a reality? Yes, it is. But it is a reality from another dimension. And so what we must do, we must begin to train ourselves to stop talking about the reality that is one-sided. And begin to speak about the reality that is in the third dimension. Because it is that reality that is going to cause you to walk into divine manifestation of the blessings of God. Who am I talking to right now? My God, I just felt that. Yes, you are in a reality. You are in a reality that maybe I don't have a job. You are in the reality, or maybe I don't have enough money. You are in the reality that, yes, my apartment is too small. But that's a one-sided reality. Because the other reality I am in is that I'm sitting here going to the third dimension because God is about to give me new direction. And so, which one are we going to talk about? Because both that we talk about will manifest something. Oh, Jesus, you talk about the normal reality and you will get it because your words were created. Are you hearing God? Oh, who am I talking to right there? Oh, Lord Jesus. But the truth, but the truth, the Bible said that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. In other words, in other words, uh, uh, uh. I don't know truth unless I know Jesus. I don't know truth unless I know Jesus. And I don't know Jesus unless I know his word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know truth unless I know his word. And so if I ignore his word, then I ignore him. And if I ignore him, I have no truth. If I ignore him, then I only have the truth, the one-sided truth. The one-sided truth is all I have. And so when you possess the one-sided truth, you always need somebody to talk to you. You always need somebody to help you and somebody to encourage you. But listen to this. It said that the real truth reconstructs the distorted reality. The distorted reality of saying to you, this is all you will have. And this is all you will ever be. And that you will never get beyond where you are. That's distorted reality. But then it said, truth has the ability to rectify distorted reality and confront lies. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? My real earpieces got left at the church, so I'm, I'm dealing with the best way that I can. But I needed to come on here today, so you all have to just bear with me today. You have to bear with all the fumbling today. I'll have them tomorrow. Truth has the ability to rectify the distortion and confront the lies. When I get into the third dimension, where I can hear the truth of what God has for me then it is that truth that confronts the lie.